Hi guys, good evening, and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in tonight's video, I'll be discussing what I thought of the latest and really good episode of Fear, The Walking Dead, which dropped its newest episode just now on AMC. I just got done watching it, really enjoyed it. Before, excuse me, before I get into all of that, of course, please be warned, if you're not caught up on Fear the Walking Dead Season 7 by this episode or the past couple of episodes, you may not want to keep watching or listening as I will be, dis be discussing spoilers, bombshells, all that jazz. So you have been warned. That being said, let's jump right back into it. First and foremost, welcome to the Walking Dead franchise, Aisha Tyler. You know, I remember 10 years ago because it was specifically during an episode of Talking Dead right after a new episode of season two of The Walking Dead had aired that Chris Hardwick had her and Michael Rooker on as guests and Aisha Tyler expressed what a fan she was of the show, The Walking Dead, because this was several years before Fear the Walking Dead ever came out. And I could have sworn, but obviously I was mistaken, but I could have sworn that by the end of season two, they had teased or confirmed that Aisha Tyler was going to be joining the show as Michonne. Obviously, a short while later, they announced Denai uh, Guiara's casting and, you know, she knocked it out of the park. So I was mistaken. I could have sworn they said Aisha Tyler was going to be Michonne, but I guess not. I guess she's just been a lifelong fan of the show. She's been on Talking Dead multiple times. And I remember reading something earlier this year that she was not only going to direct an episode or a couple of episodes of Fear, uh, but she was also going to appear as a new character. And I remember seeing an image or a still of her new character, you know, a couple of weeks before season seven dropped. And I'm like, oh, that's right. So when I saw her name in the opening credits, I'm like, oh, good. She's finally joined us. And what a character she is. Very sad about her husband, though. Not that surprising exactly, but still pretty sad, you know, because in the short time we got to know her, we got to care for her, and I already like her a hell of a lot. I mean, we've already met one celebrity in this universe, which was Beta when he was a country music star. And when Dwight got all excited, I'm like, oh, who was she, an actress or a stuntwoman? No, a professional wrestler. And Dwight was apparently a big wrestling fan and saw her perform years ago, so that was cool. And towards the end there, in her and her dead husband's workout facility, they got to actually pull a few wrestling moves on the undead, which was awesome. I love that sequence where all three of them just go to town on these walkers that are pouring in in this gym. That was great. But still, sad about her husband. But hey, you know what? Now uh, Dwight and Sherry have gained a new ally, and uh, she seems like a great new character, and I'm real excited. So welcome to the franchise, officially Aisha Tyler. So yay. Now, moving on, um, I'm a little confused as to why or what Strand could have gained by having that creep murder that poor family that Dwight and Sherry were staying with. Oh, that was sad. I didn't think we, it would be the same asshole they encountered in the opening of this episode, but apparently it was because he had photos of it. But so why Strand would have him kill these people who seem to pose no threat to him or his community? I don't know. I, it, it seems awfully extreme lengths to go to just rattle or unnerve Dwight and Sherry. I mean, I don't think he even knew Dwight and Sherry were with them, did he? I mean, he didn't even know that they were the apparent Dark Horse Outlaws, which is an awesome nickname, by the way. Um, so that part was a bit confusing. And don't get me wrong, I still like Strand, but I'm really getting tired of his uh, little friend Howard there, a little smug bastard. I hope somebody shoots him in the face or he gets eaten by a walker. Because I still like Strand, despite all his many flaws. You know, and one of the things that makes me like Strand is that he had no reason to, and he could have easily kept this information to himself. He willingly told Dwight and Sherry quite openly all the other characters who were there with him. Wendell, uh, John Dory Sr., June, uh, was there another one? Shit, that might have been it. Wait, no? Yeah, I think it was just those three. Of course, you know, he had he didn't have to tell them that at all. So the fact that he told them their mutual friends were alive, not only alive, but living in the same tower, you know, it's like, okay, so he's decent enough to keep his old friends or acquaintances at best, Dwight and Sherry, in the know. Hey, these guys are still alive, by the way. Of course, Dwight wasn't too happy when he learned that Morgan had, that Strand had turned away Morgan, uh, Sarah and uh, Grace uh, away. And of course, to his proposal, he's like, you know, shove it up your ass, 
which was understandable. But wow, what a great episode. And I love that Dwight and Sherry are finally ready to take it to the next level in their relationship in terms of finally starting a family. You know, it shows a lot of determination, especially in the zombie apocalypse, but then in a nuclear fallout zombie apocalypse to want to start a family. That takes a lot of guts. But then again, they're both incredibly determined, brave people. And I really loved how much Sherry bonded with Mickey over the mutual feeling of the unknown, not knowing the fate of a loved one, or at least in this case, a husband. And it was another prime example of how this franchise uses characters past pain or experiences, which helps them sympathize and relate to other characters who are in similar and not, if not the exact same circumstances. And it makes really great TV because then you get to see these characters like almost mirror each other where it's like, oh yeah, I remember how that felt or how that was because that was me not that long ago. Well, I'm going to help you because I really hated it when that happened to me. So I really enjoyed seeing them bond and I knew Dwight wouldn't stay separated from her for far. Speaking of Dwight, I was wondering how he's going to get out of that situation with the prick holding the gun on him. And when he uh, made the noise to summon his horse, I was like, what's the horse going to do? Just knock him over with its head? No, it kicked the hell out of him. Ow. <laughs> ouch. 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 Damn, that looks like it sounded like it hurt. But it was very reminiscent of one of my favorite scenes from uh, Quentin Tarantino's latest film, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which came out about two years ago. It was very reminiscent of one of my favorite scenes that made me and everybody else in the theater go nuts for. I won't go into specifics. If you haven't seen it, you should. And once you do see it, you'll see what I mean in terms of the similarity between the scenes. So overall, great episode. Really enjoyed it. Hope you guys are liking the season as much as I am. I know I am. It's just as good as the excellent season six and i can't wait to see what are, more they've got in store for us so what did you guys think of this latest episode of fear like it love it hate it expecting more expecting less let me know what you think down below in the comment section have an awesome rest of your night and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more episode reviews like this one have a good one everybody thanks for stopping by and of course until next time may the force be with you